What's up guys, Half Chrome. I got my new Phantom with my version two props. And we're gonna tell you what's coming next. That's the Phantom vibe. So I've got Chris here because he's the camera guy and he's gonna tell us what to expect with this new Phantom vibe. So stay tuned and don't forget to check us out on halfchrome.com because we've got all the details there as well. Right, Chris? We sure do. We'll see you in a second. Hey guys, so what we know about the Phantom 5 is from all the leaked images. We're not depending too much on the opinion of uh, the infamous Osita LV. Instead, we're going to form our own opinions. Uh, we've dissected these pictures one by one. That's what we're going to go through and, uh, and see what we can glean from these. Little things you may not have noticed yet. So let's talk about this first picture. Jack, what do you notice? Well, it looks like the bottom of the drone is the same, or at least it's pretty darn close. Uh, the one exception I would say would be these vents here. Now you can see they're slotted or louvered or whatever you want to call them. In the picture here, you don't see these slots. What does that tell you? Well, there's something covering those slots. Why would we do that? Well, I would think to keep something from getting in. What might we want to keep from getting in? My guess, agua, H2O, that's water. Yeah, maybe. And we've got some more uh, pictures that we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. Um, so if this is going to be maybe water resistant, uh, you might expect to see some updates on the bottom as well. We've got all these vent holes. Um, try to keep things cool inside of there. Is there going to be some kind of uh, water resistant membrane uh, on the inside um, keeping things? What about the card slot and the USB slot? Those do seem to be identical in these early Phantom 5 prototypes. So um, is there some way to waterproof those? I'm not an expert in waterproofing these little connectors, um, but uh, yeah, it's a possibility. So there are a few other things that we see on the bottom of this drone. Looking at the gimbal, Chris, what do you see here? Uh, pretty cool. Um, basically, a lot of these sloppy looking um, bearing joints where they're passing the harness through different joints, that looks a lot cleaner. Uh, from these pictures. They've also maybe got a cover kind of covering up the harness. They may have moved to more slip rings. Uh, as you can see here on the unique uh, Typhoon H, we've got the Infinity Spin uh, Yaw Gimbal. So uh, we do have people passing a lot of signals over these slip rings. Uh, they could be getting into more of that as a way of keeping things a little cleaner looking and a little bit better sealed up. All right, the last thing you're gonna notice is the lens, right? Not so much on this one, but on that Phantom 5 is branded DJI. So maybe not just DJI branded lenses, but maybe some uh, expensive offerings like? Like uh, Zeiss, right? That's always fan favorite. Maybe Hasselblad, so DJI is super tight. They bought, I think, uh, I don't know, they bought them out or bought a, st a majority stake in Hasselblad. Has not Hasselhoff. Not Hasselhoff. The Hasselblad's been getting out there, their name's been getting out there a little bit more lately. So um, obviously every time you see a camera, you can't buy a camera without having a Zeiss lens or some other kind of super high-end expensive lens that's available. So it's another opportunity for DJI to make money another way, this time on lenses. Yep. All right, so in picture two, we see something that does pretty much conform Firm that we think they're they're messing around with interchangeable lenses, right? For sure. I mean, that's the big story about the Phantom 5 is the interchangeable lenses. Um, waterproofing will be nice or water resistance, but the big difference is the removable lenses. And you see the button there. It's actually on the top misleading in the picture. Uh, the camera's flipped over, so that's going to be on the top of the cameras. We're going to see that button that lets you unlock the lens. So let's take a look at this third picture. What do we see about the Phantom 5? Well, it is obviously a different color. We got a nice little silver, so somewhere in between the matte black and the glossy white. Uh, I think it looks pretty slick, so that's nice. Uh, we can see that it has some obstacle avoidance sensors. They look pretty much the same as what we see on our P4 Pro. Yeah, we've seen a lot of two-tone colors and they seem to be carrying that forward uh, silver body, maybe black legs. So hopefully they keep with that. We think it looks pretty good. All right, picture four. This is our first confirmation that this uh, was actually taken somewhere in China. Right, Chris? What I do think we see so. Here? We see socks and sandals, guys. Yes, for sure. Now, I've been to China. You've been to China. 
That's a thing. Absolutely. Faux pas here. It's cool there. So it's uh, not all that uh, not all that interesting, uh, but but clearly these pictures are taken in China. It makes sense. All right. So the next picture here, we see that it does in fact fly, or maybe, maybe not. not. But what's weird about this picture is clearly DJI can make a phantom shaped drone that can fly, but there are some suspicious things about this picture and why I have no idea why they couldn't have taken a real picture here but it looks a little photoshopped. It does. It does look photoshopped to me. I, I don't think this is a real picture. If you focus in on the shadow, it's directly under the drone. The sun would be straight above it, which may be possible. possible. We can't really see the sun. You see underneath the prop on the right in the picture, that prop seems to be aligned with the arm of the drone. However, in the shadow, it looks to be perpendicular to that arm. Uh, sort of strange. Is this a rolling shutter effect where uh, one part of the picture was taken at a different time than the other? That's possible. But if you look at some of the other props, uh, they do look properly aligned between the drone and the shadow. This is kind of a silly thing to be analyzing, guys, but um, it seemed like the most boring picture, and it also seems like the fakest. Yeah, uh, oddly which is enough. stupid, right? Phantoms fly. Put it up in the air, take a picture. Um, so maybe that, uh, maybe that takes away a little bit from... Uh, from these other pictures, do you think? I don't know. I mean, they're pretty darn convincing. Uh, so I think this is a real thing, this Phantom 5 with removable lenses. But it certainly is odd that this looks like a faked picture. Another clue, if you look at this video here of me flying, uh, this guy out here with the V2.0 props, uh, this video taken looking down at about the same height. You can see how much the grass is moving around. All these uh, bush trimmings in the picture seem to be staying quite uh, nicely put there. So. Right. Uh, another Although indication. Although it is a picture, not a video. It, it is, would be it hard is, to but tell. I, I figured it'd be like cleared out. Right. You would see some movement. I would think so too. Yeah. I don't buy this picture. I don't understand it. Why would it be done? Um, but, you know, somebody did. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so we've got a 50 millimeter lens as stated on the picture here, right? But we think there are some other lenses as well. Uh, that DJI is going to release with this, right? We know they're interchangeable to just have one uh, would seem to be silly. So we've got a 50 and we have some other offerings, right, Chris? Yeah, for sure. Why have interchangeable lenses if you're not going uh, to have more than one lens, right? So 50 millimeter. Question is, is that 50 millimeter or is that 50 millimeter equivalent? So I ran the numbers. So a 50 millimeter lens is going to be equivalent to an 85 on a full frame uh, sensor. 85 is pretty narrow. It's got a field of view that's around a third of the traditional uh, DJI. So it's like a 3x zoom. Now that really isn't all that surprising. It kind of makes sense. So I believe when we see these numbers quoted that they're the actual focal length, that they're not an effective focal length. Uh, 50, if it is truly a 50 effective focal length, that would just be a 2x zoom. But that's kind of weak. Uh, we would expect a 3x kind of crop factor in their line of lenses. Now our buddy Oceda LV, uh, he sketched up a picture with a 15, a 24, a um, 35, and the 50 in there. He got the 50 right, right? He drew that sketch before, before we ever saw a picture of a 50 millimeter lens, right? Correct. Um, so he got that one right, and the question is the 15, does the 15 make sense? Well, it actually does. Why? Because a 15 millimeter lens would be 26 millimeter equivalent focal length, which is pretty much right in there with the 24 millimeter equivalent focal length that we get on the Phantom 4 right now. A little more narrow, which actually is just going to help you uh, see a little bit less prop, which you still get on the Phantom 4 uh, Pro and Advanced right now when you're flying full speed forward, even if you're not in sport mode. So just that acceleration, you'll see the props pull into view, which is really annoying. So it's going to be a little bit more narrow if it truly, if Oceda is right and it's 15 millimeter. There are other things that are hard to tell from these pictures. They could lift the props a little more, maybe taller motors, slightly different body, maybe lower the camera a little bit more. So there could be other subtle differences that help with uh, one of the issues has kind of been a bit of an annoyance with the Phantom drones historically as well. But anyway, I'm kind of actually going with Oceda on this way. 15 up to 50. And I think it actually gets a little more exciting than that as well. Let me ask you a question. I'm not a big uh, camera guy. What I do know is zoom. Can I zoom with one of these lenses? What do you think? 
Uh, not the lenses we've seen so far. They're probably what we call prime lenses, fixed focal length, not zoom lenses. So they just have an uh, autofocus degree of freedom in there, and we do expect to see the adjustable uh, iris or aperture, as well as the mechanical shutter, again, like we do on the, on the Phantom 4 Pro and Advanced and Pro V2. But what do we see that tells us they're planning for more? It's these pins, guys. They got 12 electronic pins to communicate between the body of the camera and the lens. What do you need to be able to do focus? like two or three pins maybe, maybe four if you want uh, encoder feedback or, or something like that. But um, for example, on my camera, right, it's a Sony uh, A6000. This is a mirrorless camera, but uh, in this series of cameras, it has optical image stabilization built in the lenses. So you've got um, mechanized, motorized lenses that have zoom, they have focus, two degrees of freedom of image stabilization, uh, probably with feedback there. And uh, how many pins do I have on that camera? 10, hmm. okay? So this Phantom 5, 12 pins. What is the, the, the short story there? We think there's gonna be a zoom lens offering. It may not be there uh, when it's first launched, but uh, I actually would expect it to be, right? They wanna generate as much excitement about it. Maybe that's what's slowing this thing down is the development of that lens. Uh, zoom lenses do typically have a sacrifice. You sacrifice a little F number, probably going to have a higher F number. Typically not an issue if you're flying during the day. You're getting plenty of light, especially on a one-inch sensor anyway. But you do tend to degrade the image quality a little bit. Maybe that's why DJI finally partnered up with a lens expert in Hasselblad. Not Hasselhoff. Still not Hasselhoff. Uh, so exciting to see if they crank out a DJI branded or Hasselblad branded um, Hasselblad. zoom lens. Zoom lens. It's going to be there, guys. You don't need 12 pins for focus. You just don't need it. Probably not. So that's going to be, that's the main thing. Phantom 5, interchangeable lens, zoom lens. Haven't seen a zoom lens on a DJI prosumer or consumer drone uh, since the Inspire 1, actually. Mm -hmm. Inspire 1, not even there on the Inspire 2. Mm -hmm. So it's been a while. I think it's time to show up on a Phantom. Agreed. All right, so we got one more picture that we want to talk about, right? Last picture, it's the motors. Tell us about those motors. So the thing that I noticed right away is if we look at this drone, we can see there are openings on the top, probably uh, for venting and cooling purposes. However, uh, if we take a look at, right, there we go. We got a little better picture there. Uh, if we take a look at these pictures here, we don't see those slots open on the top. Why? Well, we don't want rain coming in, right? Water is not coming in here if it can't, uh, if that doesn't exist, right? Um, so I think that's another uh, point to say, hey, they're going to rainproof these drones. I do not believe that it is waterproof. I'm not dunking this thing in my pool or in the lake or whatnot. Uh, but if I want to fly and get some nice shots on a on a rainy day. I can do that now, I hope. All right, so uh, that's what we think uh, you can expect from the Phantom 5. No, we don't have it, sorry, uh, but if you've gotten this far, you knew that already. Um, but uh, make sure you check us out at halfchrome.com because we've got lots of updates and information on not only the Phantom 5, uh, but the upcoming Mavic Pro 2 and a lot of other drones as well, not just DJI. We cover the whole gamut, whether it's racing drones uh, or DJI products or even tiny little uh, toy drones and fun things you get for your kids. So uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And again, don't forget to check us out on halfgrove.com.